Hello and welcome to the Dr. Grant Show. Today's show topic, five powerful ways to de-stress and stop emotional eating. Let's go. First way, evaluate potential sources of stress. Second way, identify distractions that contribute to that stress. Third way, create scripts to communicate with the source or sources of that stress or stressor. Fourth, morning, excuse me, powerful morning routines, utilizing yoga and EFT tapping. And finally, the fifth way, using clinical hypnotherapy. So let's talk about the first way, evaluating the potential source of stress. It's extremely important to begin to take time for yourself, to begin to learn about what stresses you, how to do this. Close your eyes and think back to what happened today, yesterday, or maybe even the course of this week. Think about the time you began to feel that little prickly feeling that was beginning to eke up the back of your neck. Or think about the time that you felt that tight feeling. You know the feeling. The feeling that indicates to you and that your body and your mind are telling you that something is just not quite right. It can be the place that you're in so far as your environment. It can be a person that you're conversing with where you just simply don't feel good about the conversation that you're having or the person doesn't make you feel safe enough to express yourself and share your voice and your opinion. No matter who or what the situation is, it's important to identify, especially if it is something that is a habitual pattern that you will be repeatedly exposed to. It is through this way you will begin to experience called what's called the precondition for change. Because unless you're aware of what's causing your reaction to your environment, you will be powerless to change it. Second way. Identify distractions that contribute to stress. With us working from home nowadays, it's extremely easy to become distracted. And these distractions can be subtle or more in your face. How's your home looking? Are you the kind of person that's easily distracted or perturbed when your house isn't in order and everything's in its place? If you live with family members that, let's say they don't share your same view, <laughs> find a special place in your home that's just for you, that you know will stay exactly the way you want it, just a small corner. And then as time goes on, broaden that safe space. If it is a person, then the key is to know who it is and why they begin to trigger you. Third way, create scripts to communicate with the stress or stressor. If it's a person that is causing you immense stress, then find out what exactly about that person makes you stressed. Do they have expectations that are not in sync with your own so far as unrealistic deadlines? Do they express their opinions in a way that doesn't really mesh with how you were raised and therefore it feels like a violation or you feeling attacked? These are only suggestions, but my point is, it's extremely important to create some kind of script. It 
doesn't mean it has to be a script that you share with the stressor if that's simply too much. You can have a script in your mind. If the person makes you feel less than or to blame for their life or their life's problems, remind yourself when you begin to feel your energy dip, you begin to feel that emotion, that feeling, remind yourself, share the script with yourself that I am more than this. I'm greater than this. The way they feel and are vocalizing their opinion about me is not a reflection of me. And I welcome their feedback, but I don't have to embrace it and make it a part of who and what I am. Their opinions are only their opinions, their expression through the perspective of the world that they see it based on the limitations and the expansion that they've been allowed in their life. Does that make sense? Good. Fourth way, a morning routine, excuse me, a powerful morning routine. Did you know yoga as well as EFT tapping have been shown in scientific studies to be extremely effective for tamping down and calming down stress levels in clinical studies? Sometimes it takes just as little as a few weeks of EFT tapping to notice a significant difference in those people that were studied and surveyed. EFT tapping and yoga combined create a very powerful combination together by removing energy blockages and helping you achieve clarity. And when you're able to achieve clarity, you're able to attract what it is that you want to attract. You're able to give yourself permission to enjoy and allow yourself the pleasure in all areas of your life, even the areas that perhaps you weren't able to see the opportunity for pleasure. You begin to experience emotions of freedom and creativity and ultimately, especially with a consistent yoga tapping routine, you embrace the ability to feel deserving of the nourishing spiritual and physical life that you were always intended to live. Fifth way, hypnotherapy. It's always important to find a board certified clinical hypnotherapist that their approach agrees with your approach. Now, with that being said, hypnotherapy also in scientific studies has been proven to help PTSD, food cravings, emotional eating, stress eating, a myriad of so many things. I'm only covering these areas because these are the areas that commonly intersect with the topic for today. But suffice it to say, Clinical studies have found that in as little as six sessions, one session a week of hypnotherapy, participants were able to achieve increased levels of calm, increased levels of problem solving and reasoning ability, as well as some, in a lot of cases, hypnotherapy administered by a board certified clinical hypnotherapist. Studies have also shown them to be more effective than the more traditional forms of therapy. Once again, it always depends upon the person. You have to be receptive to hypnotherapy in order for it to work. And this is also a clinical study that was conducted. It pertained to why hypnotherapy, for those people that have tried it, hasn't worked. Number one, you have to be open to suggestion. Number two, you have to want it to work. Number three, the hypnotherapist has to be trained in learning how to take the time to ask the right questions to ensure that the hypnotherapy is very specific and tailored and therefore accurate to helping you release the limiting thoughts that might float in your mind. Once again, hypnotherapy is excellent, absolutely excellent for helping people achieve a wonderful level of de-stressing and learning how to control emotional eating. So try it today. 
For those of you that would like to learn more about these things that I've chatted with you about today, feel free to log on to edibleaddiction.com. My name is Dr. Kirsten Grant, and I am a board certified clinical hypnotherapist, as well as trained in EFT tapping and certified neurolinguistic programming. And I am the first person to create an online study that helped women that struggle with food cravings, emotional eating and food addiction in just four weeks overcome those symptoms, which as I mentioned, often include overeating, food binges, emotional eating, stress eating. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching the Dr. Grant Show. We are on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. If this sounds like something that really resonates with you, it's your missing piece to your puzzle that you'd like to explore a little bit further, then I encourage you to find me and also schedule your free goal setting and get to know you session on edibleaddiction.com. Much love to you.